Welcome back, everybody. Um, this is another Bible study on the book, the Gospel of Mark. And today would be the very first day that we actually get into the book of Mark or the very first lesson. The last time was just a background information on John Mark. This one is actually in Mark and what he had to say. So we're going to be studying the voice out of the wilderness lesson one. But of course, before we get started, let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for all that you have done and said and did in our lives. Thank you so much for bringing us together as a family and for allowing us to be able to worship and also be able to study together. Now, dear Lord, please allow this particular um, blessing, this particular study to bless us and all those who will be able to see it later. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Like I said, this is Voice Out of the Wilderness. Lesson one, we're going to be going over Mark chapter one, verses one to eight. So starting right off, question one, message from the Old Testament did Mark use to start his gospel of Jesus Christ? And there's three scriptures. So we can each kind of like take a different scripture. Um, Cause someone will read for me, Mark chapter one, verses one to two. Someone else, Isaiah chapter 57, verse 14. And we also have Malachi chapter three, verse one. They're very similar, but it just gives us an understanding of what Mark was writing. And then of course, um, from the Old Testament. I could take Malachi. I'll take, take Malachi. Malachi. Okay. You took, take one. What's left? Malachi. Esther has Malachi. Uh, that was his, uh, Mark. Did you want Isaiah, mom? Yeah, I can take Isaiah then. Okay. okay, five seven. Okay, I mean, five 57 14. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mark chapter okay. one, one and two. In the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, behold, I send a messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. And Isaiah 57, 14 says, and shall say, cast ye up, cast ye up, prepare the way, take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. Amen. All Mary right. Malachi. Malachi 3, 1. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, said the Lord of hosts. Amen. Amen. So in everything that Mark was basically saying, like there would be a person who would prepare the way before um, Jesus. Basically, that's basically what we've been saying. Mm -hmm. That there would be someone who would be, be able to prepare that way. Question two says, how can the information from what you guys just read, thank you so much, but how can the information from question one apply to the church or an individual? Well, I put God has and is preparing people to share his goodness, um, um, to inform people to change their lives, ask for forgiveness, and start preparing for the second coming of Christ. He wants us to go out and tell that message like he did the disciples, basically. That's a really That's good point. That's what John yeah. the Baptist was doing. Yeah. Um, I put um, just um, helping someone out by moving things out of the way that could be holding them back. And as a church, delivering the message to the people who need it most. Amen. I like how you put the very practical sense. Um that's a very good point as far as actually literally helping people to move things out of the way for them. Um, that could be in a wide variety of ways, but I like that you have, that was a really good practical reason. You're right. Cause sometimes we need that something very practical to be able to help us out, to be able to move on. Were you about to say something? Esther? No, I put the same thing. Basically. Oh, the same thing. Okay. And the example I was thinking of was like, um, preparing a way for people to before like camp meeting, or like for, before like an evangelistic series, um, as far as being able to prepare the community, the city. Um, I know we've been on times where sometimes the churches wanted to be able to know what does that community want? So we go out to the area to find out what they want 
and then we try to give them certain information, certain help, maybe certain programs. But I really like how every all of our answers is a little bit different, but it's like different aspects of being able to prepare the way for the Lord, whether it's his second coming, like it was for John the Baptist when he was actually preparing for Jesus, technically up in the first coming. Um, like mom, you were saying for the second coming for us when Jesus comes back, um, but also helping prepare people in a very practical sense, helping them be able to get things out um, in general. There's a variety, variety of ways that we can very well help people. And then, of course, like I was saying for myself, for evangelistic meetings. So there's all kinds of ways that we can very well prepare people for something that the Lord is trying to do to for them, to them, or to be able to help them. So very good. I'm so glad that we all had that. Question three. It says, what was the job of the person sent before the Lord? Now I can read this one. This is in Mark chapter one, verse three. Question was, what was the job of the person sent before the Lord? It's very similar, actually, to what you guys read. It's funny. Mark was really trying to hone in on this particular thing. But it says, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. That person was about to go out there, prepare the way for the Lord, and be able to help straighten out that path. So that way, when Jesus began to do his thing, there... These people aren't talking, understanding the Lord from a completely unknown slate. Instead, there's some familiarity there. And that's what John the Baptist was basically preparing, giving people some familiarity. So when Jesus messes, when his ministry kicks in, they have some type of a foundation there. And there's probably so many people out there in which that's very important for us to be able to do that. But does anyone have anything to add to that particular question before we go on to four? No. No. Okay. <laughs> well, question four, the reason why I say because I know because question four is really that kind of answer to it, where it says, How can we have the same job description as John the Baptist? We can have an everyday relationship with God in order to follow God's instructions of leading others to him. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think what you said there is very, very key, is that we're not trying to lead people to ourselves, to our own standing or anything like that. We have a relationship with God to lead people to God. So I, I like that you said that. I'm so glad that you said that. But yeah, that's that's huge. That's key. Making sure we have that firm foundation. So when we lead people, we're leading them correctly. Mom, Thomas. Well, I had something similar. I just put... um. Helping out, helping out our fellow man by delivering the message and making their past a little easier to bear. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I helping. put God has given us all a gift that we're to use um, in order to prepare the people, whether it's singing, writing, teaching, use that gift that God gave you. Uh, John the Baptist was preaching. That was mm -hmm. his and gathering people together and preaching to them and talking to them. Um, that was his gift because people he could, you know, many people he could draw in order to talk to them about Christ's coming. Um, he was using his gift. So use the gift that God gave us to do the work that he wants us to do. Amen. Yeah. And I agree. And I'm glad that you guys have different things with it. Um, and you're right. Using the gift. I might even put something about that too as well, mom, as far as using the gifts that God has given us. Um, Tom is also as well as helping people. I don't know if we realize just how much that really can really show a love and a compassion of the Lord whenever we help somebody, that we show that there's some positive people. There's some good stuff out there. Sometimes we get inundated with negativity, but it's good to be able to show people that we still have love out there in the world and there's still great things. And by using our gifts, we can do that. Like you said, John the Baptist was preaching people. Now we have like social media. That's what I also put down there, using social media for good, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on Twitter, TikTok, I don't know, whatever's going to come in the future, YouTube, all that kind of stuff. But using it um, to be positive, to be able to lay that path down for people be able to start having that relationship. So I'm glad we kind of like told like a well-rounded um, idea, building a relationship with God, helping people 
and then using our gifts to be able to get that out there. Of course, they just social media. Obviously, we do it in church. We could do it, you know, in other areas. But it's just one of those things of being of use to the Lord from whomever we might come across. Question six says, a part of John's message was repentance. Read the following verse. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry, I skipped the question. Question five. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. That don't sound right. Question five. We're about to be on question five. What were John the Baptist's sermon topics for the people? I kind of just gave it away. So we could just say, we can just discuss it. Um, so what was John the Baptist's sermon topics in question five? That's found in Mark chapter one, verse four. Repent for um, for the remission of their sins. That's it. Yep. That was his big thing. Repent for the remission of your sins. So his big thing was remove all that stuff that's holding us back so that way we can definitely be clear so that was it repentance so mm -hmm. now going to question six a part of john's message was repentance thank you Esther. read the following verses and explain the benefit performing this action um i guess we could do once again a round table can someone read for me second chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 Someone else read Acts chapter 2, verse 38, and I'll read Revelation 16, verses 9 to 11. Okay. Oh, I can read 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Okay. And then afterwards, we can kind of like discuss. I got Acts 2, 38. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is seven fourteen. Okay. You ready? Mm -hmm. I was just yeah, gonna right. say it. Let me know if I say it right. But it's blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the oh, I'm sorry. Ah, the Psalms. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. <laughs> seven fourteen is my people. I start quoting wrong thing. Uh, okay. which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land amen amen thank you mm -hmm. all right acts chapter 2 verse 38 says then peter said to them Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. In Revelation chapter 16, verses 9 to 11 says, And men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God, who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom became full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues because of the pain. They blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and did not repent of their deeds. So just in discussion, what is the benefits of performing the act of repentance? Um. God will forgive you for your sins if you repent. Amen. And um, be honest about your sins. You know, that's a good point. I'm glad that you just said that. Be honest. I think a lot of people sometimes aren't. <laughs> they don't want to admit when they're wrong. They don't want to admit if they do something, whatever. They, yeah, I'm glad that you said that. I hope anyone who is, please be honest with what you it's between you and the lord just be honest with the lord say you know what, lord this is what i did i need help for this so that way you can be able to have the healing and the lord can remove and re remove that sin and that guilt from you so i'm glad that you said that be honest all right uh, go ahead i'm about to say for like revelations we will be punished mm -hmm. if we don't admit mm -hmm. our sins mm -hmm. and change our ways. And in Second Chronicles, when you 
you're honest. God says, seek his face. So we're not only to ask for forgiveness, but study, get to know him, but he, and he will bless us. We don't do Amen. all that, and he will not bless us. <laughs> and yeah, and that's the one thing between those two. In Chronicles, there's this, if you humble yourself and you come to the Lord, you'll be blessed when you do that. When you say, Lord, I am going to, you know, forgive me, everything else. God blesses you. But you're right. But like you said, Esther, in Revelations, people are going through it and they still was like, no, nah, I'm still not going to repent. And you're like, wow, that's bold. That's real bold yeah. to just be like, I'm just going to be stuck on this. I don't care. I'm burning. I don't care. I'm going through it. Don't care. I'm not going to repent. And so it's interesting, that tactic. And sometimes you do have to be humble. Like you were saying, time you have to be honest. And you just got to be able to come to the Lord and say, you're like, you know what? I need help here. I'll please forgive me for this compared to, nope, I'm not going to do it. And then you end up going through something so much worse. So it sounds mm -hmm. almost unnecessary in Revelation. It sounds unnecessary, but as you can imagine, a lot of people. Go ahead, Esther. What are you about to say? You know, me and Mom was talking the other day. Of, oh, uh, mm -hmm. We was talking about um Sham. Ham and Jephthah, uh -huh. and you know, then Sodom and Gomorrah and stuff. And it's like when they started to fall, I mean, who's the one that, that messed up? Sham, Ham, <laughs> Ham, Ham, Ham. Ham. Mm -hmm. Ham was on the boat, like Ham saw God destroy the world, <laughs> right? He saw God right. destroy the world with the flood, uh -huh. like it's just us and animals. and even with that, he had an experience with God straight on. You can see mm -hmm. what God can do. He still chooses his own path and mess up, you know, mm -hmm. and some, mm -hmm. we get different little things in our lives where it's like, oh, God is blessed. You know, God will bless us with something. And then we could have people kind of be as unsmart as ham, like mm -hmm. had that direct experience with God. And then like, oh, but I'm still do something over here. And now <laughs> I'm, I'm punished to to in revelation because i didn't repent right you know maybe i didn't want the help i really deep down didn't want to try even though i you know but mm -hmm. yeah somebody who had that direct and he's just like oh i'm gonna still do something not smart right <laughs> and you bring up a good point in that and that's that's fantastic because he it's not like it would be different if they all were cool like they get off they do their thing and then mm -hmm. generations down the line continue start to mess up you can understand that but you're right but for him to go through what he go like you're on the boat like there's so much stuff there that you figure well they should have just been cool and then down the mm -hmm. route line your people not him and then he right. cools on. you're just like what How, what but you're right um uh, people probably do that now we do yeah. that now so the mm -hmm. Lord can do something dramatic, can do amazing, something amazing, and we still like, yeah, I'm still going to do this over here. So, yeah, it, I don't know. It just, <laughs> whew, sometimes it's amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Lord, will help me. Well, I guess that's what their whole repentance is like. Lord, then help me not to do that. So, yeah, right, good, good. <laughs> man. But that's an excellent point. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Question seven says. What was the crowd's response to John the Baptist's ministry? And that's Mark chapter 1, verse 5. Someone can read for that real quick. Mark chapter 1, verse 5. What was the crowd's response to John the Baptist's ministry? Um, I agree. Okay, and thank you. Out, and they went out unto him all the land of Judea, and they of Jerusalem, and they were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. Amen. So he had a ministry, do this for the Lord. They liked it. They went into the river. I'm so glad we have baptismal pools, no lie. I know, I know people sometimes still do that. I'll praise God. I'm glad people use their body of water. Praise the mm -hmm. Lord. I am very happy, though, for the baptismal pool. But they went out to the Jordan River, and they all... um confessed their sins and was baptized okay. question eight says according to john the baptist 
How did he describe Jesus Christ and his mission for the world? For this one, we could just discuss it. So how did he describe Jesus and what was his mission for the world? How he described Jesus as being powerful yes. and he's the giver of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you're right. And I like how John even talked about himself being humble. Like right. I can't even like loose his shoes or so. You know, it's like basically what you're saying was, I can't even do like the most minimal of task. Like I'm not even worthy to do the smallest of tasks for Jesus. That's mm -hmm. how much greater he is. And hopefully more people, whenever they're trying to do something for the Lord, they take that mindset. I know sometimes, sometimes we get a little beside ourselves. We get a little, this is my ministry. I'm blah, blah, blah. Sometimes we forget that we're actually doing something for God and that mm -hmm. we're actually, it's, it's an honor to do something for the Lord, not just like a privilege, not like, yeah, you know, I'm the right. No, 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 no. It's an honor for us, for God to say, I have something for you to do for me. That's very honorable. So we have to sometimes remember that whenever we're doing something for the Lord, to stay humble like John the Baptist did. But did you guys have anything to add to that particular question? I, I like how he told the people, all I can do is baptize you. But he mm. says, Jesus can give you the Holy Spirit. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I like that. Yeah. He was clear. He knew his limitations of what he was doing. So right. that was all. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. Well, last question. I know this one is. Oh, you. <laughs> no. You she want to say something. Oh, go ahead. How do we go ahead, Nancy. You say Jesus love. Jesus love. Yes, right. Yes, he is. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, about to go into question nine. And this one's a little bit short because the other one was like this long range thing. But go into question nine. What would you say if someone didn't know Jesus and asked you for a description of Christ and his mission? And Exy kind of started us off talking about Jesus' love. Which is actually something I put down myself. So actually, we're the same on that. Jesus is love. But what mm -hmm. would you say uh, if someone asked you who Jesus is and his mission? What would you describe um, Christ, or how would you describe? Him? Um, Personally, oh, go ahead, Thomas. Um, well, I just put he was a miracle worker who can save all if you believe. Amen. Yep. I, and I, like it, I would explain what Christ has done personally for me and give them examples of what he's done for me. I like that. I like that. Allow your life to be able to be the um, the message of the Lord or showing Jesus out there to the people. I like that. So it's like, just don't just, hey, this is what it is done. So, amen. I like that. I like the miracle worker and showing him what he's done for me. Did you have anything to add, Esther? I said, uh, Jesus is patient because of all the nagging and ridicule that he had to wow. deal with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you're so right. And as we get through this, you're probably going to be times where you're going to be like, okay, the Pharisees to get like, it, it, you know, like, you know what, Lord, you're better than me. Oh, uh, there's, there's going to be a lot of times you're going to go through here. Yes, yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Where the Pharisees kept nagging him. And it made me think like, okay, Lord, please help me not to do this to you. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's just a lot. There's a lot. This is Mark is the shortest of the gospels. And it's a lot. So um, thank you. I'm glad that you said that. Patience and how much he had. And like I said, actually, actually said exactly what I wrote down. The first thing I said, but he's love and he com he's compassion personified. He really does show love and he's very compassionate. Um Jesus will show sometimes the most compassion to like the lowest people in society a lot. He tried to always uplift those that many people try to um, overlook or thought lower of. And Jesus put specifically would sometimes go out to help those people to show like we're supposed to be here for everyone, not just the rich, not just the learned, not just those who have a relationship with God but with everyone. So 
he really is setting in that standard and is like, well, help me out, Lord, each day try to my best to live up to that. But does anyone have anything to add to that before we close out for today? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Well, two weeks from now, we're going to be doing the baptism in the wilderness. I like this one. I know, Mom, we had talked about this a little bit um, mm -hmm. about when Jesus got baptized in the the awesome right. event that took place behind us. So, yeah, this whole first part was actually all John the Baptist talking about mm -hmm. Jesus. And now we're about to actually get into something specifically about Jesus and what happened. So we're going to do that. That's lesson two, the baptism in the wilderness. So before we close out, let's close out in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for allowing us to be able to have this understanding of your word and Mark to be able to go into it, dear Lord, and be able to um, see more about you and also about how we can very well be those who help prepare the way for others, for your soon return, for evangelism, for um, just to be able to help them out here on earth to God, whatever it is, please continue to bless us and give us the resources, the mindset. And that belief, Lord, that you are truly doing something, um, allowing us to be able to do something for you, for others. Now, thank you so much to God once again for allowing us to be able to come together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.